NXD, just a couple of final comments about the annexes. NXD is where you had references to IEEE 1584, as well as a couple of other ArcFlash calculation methods. A big change with Annex D. So what happened is with the introduction of the new 2018 edition of IEEE 1584, we had to make some changes in the Annex because historically Annex D, you could look at your 2018 edition and, and see this, Annex D had equations from uh, a late 1990s paper. Those were some of the first empirically derived equations for uh, ArcFlash. And then there were equations for the 2002 edition of IEEE 1584. And then there were some equations from a couple of technical papers about DC ArcFlash. Well, with the introduction of the 2018 standard, it's a, a very complex standard. The equations are much more complex, and there are tables of many, many uh, k values, coefficients that are used. And it was just, it's like I said, it's a very complex standard. So the decision was made not to include the equations in Annex D. It was just going to be too overwhelming. Without the guidance and everything that goes with it, basically you'd have to stick the entire 1584 standard in there for the guidance on how to use it. So instead, what we have in Annex D is a lot of information about IEEE 1584, the 2018 standard. Stopping just short of including, it'd be pages and pages of tables and, and equations and everything in there. So that, that was a, a pretty big change as far as Annex D. And then there was another change to uh, an Annex. Actually, it's an addition. And th these are just the high points. There, there were a lot of other, you know, uh, changes that, that happened to the whole NFPA 70E standard. But I'm just trying to point out some of the major changes. And this, was, is, this one is Annex F, Risk Assessment and Risk Control. So there was a new F.7 that was added when you're working around battery systems. And F.7, it's acknowledging that if you're working around battery systems, there's more than one hazard. There's multiple hazards. And they may be encountered when working on batteries. So you, you have the shock hazard, of course, possible arc flash hazard, but you also have the chemical hazard, the thermal hazard. And so it's acknowledging that the PPE selection needs to take into account all these hazards. Uh, and there's a, uh, a flow chart to help with this. We also have another informative annex, informative annex R. This is a monumental amount of detail about working with capacitors. This has some great information in it. This has a lot of equations, calculations, when it comes to determining the stored energy and, and the blast hazard. There's actually information in there about a blast hazard relying on some uh, earlier equations. So let me uh, just take a couple minutes here and uh, see if I can uh, go through a few of these questions. I do want to offer all of you just a, a huge, huge thank you before I get into the questions. Um, it's just been my privilege to be able to be here. When I saw how many people um, signed up for this and, and how many countries, you know, 18 countries, it was just <laughs> very humbling for me. So I, I appreciate it. And let me uh, see what we have here as far as, wow, there's a lot of questions here. Have the ASTM standards been removed or have the IE... <laughs> okay, let, let me answer. This is a good one. So, have the ASTM standards been removed or have the IEC standards been added? Good question. They're all there together. So, ASTM is still there. And in the U.S., I mean, that's what we use. But uh, there are other parts of the world, and they're represented here online, where the IEC standards are used. So, they're just they're referenced in there as well. Uh, let's see here. Um... Any discussion of arc rated glove requirements? Actually, a couple years ago, ASTM developed an arc rated glove standard. We're actually developing one in IEC uh, as well. And so as, as far as uh, NFPA 70E, the requirements are um, either arc rated gloves, they, they do exist, or you can still use rubber liners and leather protectors. Um, there was some informal testing with these um, years ago, one of the main PPE testing people. Uh, and showed that you get a pretty pretty high um, arc rating. It's not an official test, but you get pretty good protection. So right now, 
NFPA 70E is kind of in, in, in both sides of this, arc-rated gloves or rubber liners and, and leather protectors. Uh, when will the new 2021 NFPA 70E standard be available? Uh, usually it's in the fall. In fact, something else I want to mention, a lot of you are already aware of it, but um, within NFPA 70E, there's also a requirement that um, you do go through refresher training at intervals not to exceed three years. And the reason it's three years, it's to sync up with the new standard. So that, that's one of the uh, courses that we'll be rolling out here pretty soon, probably in the next month. Uh, it'll be a one day, just the refresher for the new 2021 and, and reviewing a lot of the, the main parts of, of NFPA 70E. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody uh, joining. So have a great day or evening for some of you or uh, have a great breakfast for some of you on the other side of the globe. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much.